Today, we're going to be painting Captain K from the Blood Angels and taking him to the tabletop. Yo dog, Katie Boucher here, next level painting, hitting you up on the literal best of all days on this glorious Friday in the Beats Lab in Hollywood, California. I got another painting tutorial for you. We're painting Captain K, Captain Carlene from the Blood Angels, that's that special Blood Angels captain. Last week, we nurtured all the reds up. We showed you an old school style of painting red and today we're taking him to the tabletop and then next week, we're gonna take it to the next level and pop the highlights out. Today is just an exercise in knowledge. Technique is the skill. I'm gonna show you how to do very simple techniques to get your model to the tabletop with true hobby effort. All right, let's talk about this hoodie. This is one of a kind. Always keep the tip clean. We did a big exclusive t-shirt sale on Twitch. It's done now, you can't get them now. The only way you can get them is I have a few left that are going to be giveaway items on Twitch in this one hoodie. It will be signed and personalized. Only one person can ever get it because I will never produce this hoodie again. If you want an opportunity to get down on some of these giveaways on Twitch, you're going to need to go to Twitch, make an account, and start watching the live stream. Tuesdays and Fridays, twitch.tv forward slash next underscore level underscore painting. You're not going to want to miss it. It is literally the new hotness. I want to shout out a couple clutch individuals. My man, Scott, Martin, Guy, Kareem, John, Headshock, Killer Minis, my man, Mr. Justin, and of course, Ollie. Can't do it without you guys. Patreon is my personal crowdfunding page. It is how I keep the lights on. Thank you guys. Bottom of my heart. Also, the longword.net is the home of the battle reports and the fastest growing library in video content related to Warhammer, Warhammer 40K, Age of Sigmar literally everything anyway guys let's do this let's do this thing guys i'm gonna grab that ancient chinese technique the gw gloss wash it's almost cheating so we obviously gloss varnished this guy last episode after we finished up that red locked it all in so what we're doing here is we're combining the gloss medium in this wash with the gloss hard shell it breaks up the surface tension in a very desirable way like it just i mean it's cheating it pushes all the wash into the crevices and leaves the surfaces very bright and vibrant still with very little staining that more traditional matte washes leave behind like that coffee staining. That just doesn't happen here. It's a really good technique to help you get to that place where you want to do all your highlights. Of course, it dries shiny. It's super horrible, but with a little bit of matte varnish, my favorite being Model Masters by Testers, Lusterless, you can matte it back down. And look at that red. That's a good looking red. Nice deep red. Now we're going to use some new tech. Secret Weapon Acrylics Tire Black. This is quickly becoming one of my favorite colors. It's kind of an off black with a little bit of a green hue to it. It's it's really awesome. Like I fucking, I find an excuse to use it all day, every day. Like I'm just like, oh, I don't know. I'm going to paint this tire black all day, every day. Like I'm going to paint this cock rope tire black. Any excuse tire black. There is a whole series of rubbers, like rubber paints, like rubber, rubber highlight, tire black, all in the Secret Weapon Acrylics line. And I'm going to start off, obviously, by using tire black and all the servo joints, all the ligaments, all the connections, all the pipes, all the hoses. One of my favorite things about this color is that it's not quite black, so you can wash it black and it'll give you definition. It'll give you subtle transition. It's a great place to start with. And you can already see he's coming together. We painted in those shoulder pads. We locked in those rubber joints. You know, here we are hitting those, uh, I don't know what the fuck those are. The things that make Space Marines strong. I don't, I mean, fuck, I'm not a, I'm not a Space Marine armor scientist. It's looking pretty good though. I'm feeling like it's, you know, now we can see the bigger picture. This is, this is a paint by numbers. I always preach against it. While we're at it, because last week you saw us airbrush down the main part of his cape. We're going to just lock some watered down tire black into this piece with our big brush and then we'll detail it back in with our little brush. A little bit of water, make sure it's nice and thin. This admittedly doesn't have the best coverage of the secret weapon range, but it is still amazing. Now we're going to do an old school trick. A little bit of aluminum and a little bit of black metal. These are both Vallejo Airline. I'm going to kind of mix them together, kind of 50-50, and we're going to make kind of a nice in-between tone and we're just going to go beast mode. We're going to just pick out all the metals 
even the things I'm going to paint gold, we're going to paint silver right now. And this is paint by numbers for the most part because we're not trying to get any of this on the red because the red is very smooth and very natural right now. It's very naturally transitioned. It's a very deep red. We want it to look its best. We don't want to come back in there and blend it up. At some point, we will come back in there and edge highlight it, but not today. So one of my ancient Chinese techniques is even the gold Aquilas and the belt buckles and the championship wrestling belts, all that shit, all the bling that's going to be gold. Just don't even, don't, don't paint by numbers it. You know, when there's a chain hanging over some shit that's going to be gold, don't sit there and just paint the chain silver and, and try not to get the silver on the, on the, on the Aquila. It doesn't matter because you know what? Gold paints over silver very easily. It's actually a really good place to start. So we're painting up that Thunder Hammer. I'm starting predominantly with the black metal. And then I'm, while it's still wet, I'm coming hot with that aluminum mix. Give us a nice clean look. Real easy. These Vallejo Air Metallics are literally the best metallics on the face of the fucking planet. Just buy them. Now what we have here is a pretty hideous looking model as, these, as we work these uh, details into it. We're back to tire black and we're going to cut some details back in around the Storm Bolter. So you'll notice I didn't worry about painting the Storm Bolter um, in such a way where I left that casing still red and then went back to paint it black. I just painted the whole motherfucker gold. I mean silver. And even the Aquila on it you see there, that's going to be gold. Like so, like I said, silver is a good base for gold. You'll see what I'm talking about here. So there is, we are painting by numbers certain elements of it, but don't make it harder for yourself. Like don't, you know, cut around things that you don't have to cut around. So here's one of my favorite techniques, a little bit of Reaper New Gold, Molten Bronze, mix them together 50-50. You basically are stealing the stick from the from the ancient bronze with a little bit of this OG brightness. The, basically, the, old, the, the new gold is very yellow, which I love. And so you see that we're getting a nice, clean gold over this silver. It sticks really easily. This is very watered down, very thin. Uh, I mean, almost no pigment at all, and it just it's just building up really easily, as you can see. We're just picking all the spots out, coming in, almost washing the gold over the silver. Very watered down. Very easy. You see, we did the Aquila, all the bling, the belts, everything, bro. Super fucking easy. This is also one of my new favorite secret weapon colors. This is Weathered Wood. This is a great color. I find an excuse to use this all the time as well. It mixes in with so many of their other colors. It's an off-white. And I'm going to use it here for the Purity Seals. Come in and paint all this parchment rock quick. Um, I'm coming on a little thick here so I can get some good stick. And it's a thin enough of a pigment, of a paint, sorry, in general, that I'm able to raw dog it with almost no water in it. And now I'm just kind of dappling on the, uh, the areas that didn't stick very well. And I'll let it dry for a few minutes, come back in there, give it a second coat. Uh, but raw dog two coats. Another secret weapon color, light dust. I find an excuse for this as well. Light dust can be bone, it can be dirt, it can be khaki. It's a great starting point for a bone, which you're gonna see we're gonna do here in this crux. I think that's what this thing is called. I like to call it the arm skull. And we're just gonna bang it all out with some of this light dust. Watered down, probably two coats, keep it thin. Like I said, we're not, we're, we're gonna use a lot of you know layers here. We're gonna be washing things. You don't wanna build that paint up to a real thick area. Now we're gonna go back to that weathered wood and we're gonna blend it in, wet blend it in while this is still wet. And you see now we're gonna get a nice bone effect here. Now we're not gonna go super gangster with this wet blend. We're gonna just, you know, block it in. Just kind of like cell shade it, exaggerate it because we are gonna wash it down. And then we'll come back in later and edge highlight it, make it real crisp. You can see I'm, I am lining it, but very loose, very, very broad strokes here. Not, not really focusing down on it. Just trying to get a simple transition here. Easy mode. You can see it's pretty good. That's a solid transition. I'm fucking very happy with that. It really is starting to pop with those blacks and those reds. I love how the black shoulder pad really breaks it up with that, you know, that white skull. You know, and here it is. We're just doing a final couple pieces of cutting in with some going back to that dust, making it look its best. Another old school color, Meridius Blue. This is Privateer Press P3 formula. We're going to go through and paint every jewel with this color. Now, like GW paints some of them yellow or some of them green, some of them purple, like literally every fucking jewel is a different color. I'm like, you know what? That's ridiculous. This turquoise color works really well over red. It's a great color combo. Just do them all with this. Easy mode. And we'll come back in and do some gem effects, obviously, 
as we work toward our tabletop standard for this video. Royal purple, another game color. I'm gonna paint the purity seal wax uh, with this color because you can't have red purity seals over red armor. That's hilarious. And I have done green before, but purple is my favorite. So just a little bit of this purple and we'll draw from our Meridi's blue since it's still in the palette. And we'll actually lighten this purple up with a rapid fire, quick little wet blend with a second pass here. And since we have a little bit of this new purpley turquoise on our brush, we're just gonna lay some down over these gems and darken them up so we can come back in for the epic highlight. All right, another P3 color. This is their one of their flesh shades. It's a very bronzy skin tone. I'm gonna water it down. It's got a good stick. It's almost like a GW old school foundation color. We're gonna just bang it out over this red on his face because red is a pretty solid starting place for this flesh tone. So it's gonna stick really well even though it's thinned down. This is one coat, one thin coat. Now, while we still have some of that flesh on the palette, we're gonna grab this yellow from GW and we're gonna just yellow it up, making it kind of a straw yellow. And we're gonna just bang it out right over his hair. It's gonna get pretty good stick even though it's really thin. This uh, P3 paint has real good stick and as a base for this yellow, you know, it's just gonna stick all day every day. So now there he is looking kind of stupid right now because, you know, <laughs> shit looks dumb until it's done. We're going back to tire black and we're going to paint in his, uh, I want to say, what do you call someone who wears just one half of glasses? I mean, I guess that's a scouter. Is that what we're calling it? So we're going to paint in his scouter, tire black, easy, keep it clean, keep it classy. Paint, dot that little uh, eyepiece with a little bit more of that Meridius Blue, which we basically decided is the color of all lenses and gems. Back to light dust. I said this is a great color. It's that khaki. It can be a khaki. So water down, big brush, lay down some of it. Look at that. Look at that stick. That secret weapon. Pretty good. And we'll come in with our paintbrush and detail it up. We'll even grab our airbrush and, you know, just angle it just so and, and just add a little bit of a transition to it. That's the whole reason we left the cape off in the first place. And this is just a little piece of the cape that's still glued to them or it's, or it's actually part of the model. All right, it's go time, guys. Back to our gloss washes. I got a little bit of null oil left, a little bit of Argrax Earthshade. And we're going to come in and kind of use both of them in combination. And we're going to start washing things on this guy. These gloss washes do the Lord's work. I'm all about them. Lord of Darkness, of course. And we're just going to make sure there's always a nice little border, a little bit heavier on the brown side of the wash, around these things over the over the, the red armor. And we're going to predominantly um, wick away as much of it as we can from the raised areas, like these purity seals. But you get a pretty good effect here. Same thing, we're leaning heavier on the black side of the, the two colors, going into these metallics. And then we're going to be careful to draw a nice little pin uh, border around everything. And... I'm going to be a little bit aggressive here at the top to create more the more borders, more contrast. Now we're going to go in here, just lock a lot of this known oil over this uh, storm bolter. Just drop it on there and then we'll come back in with a little brush and push it into all the nooks and crannies. And then we'll even draw it over some of the nuts and the bolts. You cannot forget the nuts. Um, we're going to hit his face mainly with the earth shade. A little bit of black in the mix though. Just put it on there, push it around into his, you know, his cheekbones, into his eye sockets. You know, go on heavy and then wick it away. The, it's going to do work because you can actually wick it back into the red armor and blend it. It's, I mean, these these gloss washes you can do work with. All right, we put it on his, we put him on his base. We glued his other cape on from yesterday's video or last week's video. There he is, Captain K, Captain Carlene, is a tabletop standard right now. I talk about effort all the time. This is, in my opinion, the minimum effort. This is what I like to see when you see the Long War Devils event here at Adepticon in 2017. This is what I consider a tabletop standard. You saw this. Literally, all we did was paint colors on the model, drop washes on it all day, every day. Skill is the technique. Thanks for watching, players. If you like these tutorials, check out Next Level Painting on Patreon. Become a patron of the arts today. We offer early and exclusive access to our videos and a rewards program for different pledge levels. Patreon is PayPal and credit card secure, so you don't have to worry about that. We use 100% of the money to improve our process.